We are joined once again by Garrick Utley, president of the Levin Institute of the State University of New York and a former NBC News correspondent and anchorman. And then Yervon Abrahamian, distinguished professor of history at the City University of New York and an author of several books about Iran. Thank you both for being with us. Thank you. Yervon, let me begin with you because I want to get your reaction to the speech that was made by Ayatollah Khamenei. What did you think of his words? Well, it was not an olive branch. It was very threatening. Basically, he was saying that if there are protests and there's violence, it will be the responsibility of the leaders of the demonstrations, i.e. Mossavi and Karupi and Rezaei, will be held responsible for this. So it was basically an ultimatum for them to uh, call off meetings, especially the big meeting that's supposed to come tomorrow. So now they'll be faced with that choice. If they go ahead, they can be then accused of basically uh, treason, acts against God and whatever. Um, or Do you think if, this opens up the potential now, seriously, for violent confrontation on the streets? Uh, well, the, str the the demonstrators are adamant that they're not going to be violent, that they want peaceful, dem even silent demonstrations. But then if they have vigil antis, besieges, uh, revolutionary guards coming in to beat them up, then there could be violence. But then if there is that violence, and in the last week, in fact, it's been the Ahmadinejad's people who've been courting violence. They've been actually calling for demonstrations in the same place that the opposition had. If that's, of course, recipe for violence. I want to bring in, I want to talk about uh, the besieging in a moment. But uh, Garrick, let's talk about the U.S. reaction here. There's been criticism against the Obama administration for not responding strongly enough. What would you say? Well, first of all, a lot of that uh, criticism is expected. People want an American leader to speak out passionately. We're for human rights and you shouldn't suppress this protest movement. But Obama knows the difference between being cautious or overly cautious and being careful. After all, he's the one who took the initiative, opened the door for a dialogue. And the decision on that dialogue is really going to come not for whoever is president of Iran, but really from the supreme leader and the ruling power structure there. And he wants to keep that door, if possible, open. So I think what he is doing is absolutely responsible in the correct course. And following up what uh, we've been talking about here, the government there, or the power structure in Iran, is looking for pretext to use greater methods of repression if the protest continues. And um, you don't want, as the American president, to be um, involved in that or be used as an excuse. because. Go ahead. Well, the moderates would be demonized, essentially, is what you're saying, Precisely. by their association. Precisely. Mm -hmm. In fact, the opposition there has been very categorical. They don't want the American government to get involved. Well, what about the American people getting involved, speaking out? Well, that's our American people's rights to do so. I think civil society, human rights organizations, they have all the right to do that, but not on the name of the American government. They should be kept separate. The besiege. This has been spoken about, it's written about in the New York Times today, is described as a vigilante force inside of Iran. Who are they? Well, they're usually young, very young people uh, recruited in, but they're under the command of revolutionary guards. So it's not just a haphazard group of thugs going around. They're pretty well organized. So when there is an attack in the dormitories or attack in the streets, it's then you can say it was ordered by the Revolutionary Guards. They're dressed in civilian clothing. I mean, they're acting in a way that the government can say, we don't know who they are. Yes, some are, some are not uniform, but I think most people know that it's it's not just uh, hooligans on their own. It's it's not really vigilantes. It, it's an arm of the Revolutionary Guards. Garrick, if it does become more violent, does the United States' role change? Is uh, the, 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 the control that the president has shown change? No, the president would have to speak out in no uncertain terms. If it was a Tiananmen Square type of situation that will happen in Tehran, for example. That said, uh, short of that kind of violence, I think what Obama really is saying right now is that the issue, or is seen right now, is that the issue has moved beyond who is going to be president of Iran. Ahmadinejad or somebody else. It is now a question of the ruling power structure of the supreme leader himself, and that's going to be the option of the supreme leader and his circles. The one question is, how much, uh, how tight is the unity around the supreme leader in Iran? And we don't know that. Mm -hmm. What would you say? Are there cracks there? Are there indications that perhaps uh, the very hard line group is not as solid? 
No, I mean, there's been the election actually showed that one of the candidates running, of course, is a former commander of the Revolutionary Guards. The clerics are not united. Uh, there have been very, I would say, very quite radical reformers among the Ayatollahs. They're very conservative ones, ultra conservative ones. Uh, so there is that division has been always there. Uh, this, of course, makes it much more crystallized because. Uh, the ones who've been critical in the past will go to Khamenei and say, you know, you're jeopardizing the whole Islamic Republic by hitching the whole of the future of the Islamic Republic on Ahmadinejad. I know every time we speak I ask them this, but mm -hmm. how do you see it ending? And is it going to end soon? It, I think it could go on like the Islamic Revolution went on really for 14 months. Uh, we could have this sort of process. And, of course, the fear generally is that the government will call upon the Revolutionary Guards for a massive crackdown like Tenement Square. Uh, if that happens, and it's not quite clear whether the Revolutionary Guards will remain united. It's, uh, it's not that much uh, written in granite that there is that solid support there because they very much also reflect society. There are many people, I'm getting reports from the countryside that many villagers were actually outraged that there's this type of rigging that went on. Garrick, I want to say that this story has been followed very closely mm -hmm. by the American media. How do you think we've done in covering this story? It's been very awkward. Well, it depends who we is. Is it pardon the expression, traditional media, or is it the totality of what we're getting? If it's the totality of what we're getting, it's done a very good job. The technology from the Twitters to the instant message, the, uh, the webcasts, et cetera, plus the traditional media, I think Americans have gotten a very good indication and feeling of what's happening in Iran. They understand the dynamics, and I think most do understand what the president's position has been and why he's saying what he is saying and not saying what perhaps other people would like him to say. So if you take media broadly, Yes, the news has gotten through. Why do you think Americans follow it so closely? I think we remember 1979, the fall of the Shah. Uh, there was a similar dynamic there. There were protests. There was recession, a, re a repression. In the end, the Shah left and fled, came here for medical treatment. And we know what that led to. Part of it was the U.S. Embassy being taken um, hostage. So there's an emotional nerve end in the American body politic that's being touched again here, at least for people of a certain generation. And in a way, we've seen this film before, perhaps different players. And the question is whether it's going to come to a similar conclusion. Plus, the boat is so sacred to the American population. That, Everybody, of course, that goes without saying. But I think people understand. Look at China. Look at Tiananmen Square. There was an import. China's not Iran. China's much different. But Tiananmen Square occurred. It was terrible. It was repression. It was bloody. The American administration criticized it in no uncertain terms. And yet we're still trying to deal and have to deal with China. We have to. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I've got to wrap it up there. Garrick Utley, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yervon Abrahamian, thank you very thank much. You. We appreciate both of you for your insights.